Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of This Week in Philadelphia Sports where, as you might have guessed it, we go over everything that's happened this week in Philadelphia Sports. Again, if you're new to this channel and you do enjoy this sort of content, it would mean a lot to us if you could hit that subscribe button down below. We're this close to our end of year goal of 15,000 and it's the best way to be part of this community as well as joining our Discord server down below where you can connect with members of the PSN community, find new friends and of course talk about your beloved Eagles which is where we're going to start today's show because what the hell happened last night? I have no idea. That was the biggest emotional roller coaster since the last time I opened Tinder and accidentally called a girl knees. Yeah, autocorrect isn't my friend. The Eagles went into halftime to the boos of thousands of Eagles fans. It was pouring with rain, the weather was dismal, and it reflected the Eagles' season. It was just shockingly bad, and there was so much to complain about. Going into that game, the Eagles had three healthy wide receivers. Olshon Jeffrey then goes down. That leaves them with Greg Ward and JJ Ortega Whiteside. But don't worry, because Super Josh Perkins is on the way. And we're going to get to all of the underdogs a little bit later in this video. And then even in the third quarter, there was a drive where the offense was booed inside the red zone. And it may as well have been a stadium of Giants fans booing. Because the noise it made, Zaka jumped offside on a key play. And that's got to hurt for a team to be booed for that long by their own fans and something started to click. The Eagles went on a surgical rampage. Carson went stepped up to the plate in a way that fans have been begging for since his arrival. In a way that naysayers have been saying that he can't do since his arrival and he took that game over. And I don't think it matters that it is the 2-10 and 10 Giants. It could have been the San Francisco 49ers. It could have been the Pats. It could have been the Seahawks. It could have been the Dolphins. It doesn't matter. The Eagles needed that win and here's the reason why. I spoke a lot recently about top of the mountain itis or whatever you want to call it where when you reach the ultimate goal or something you've had tunnel vision on for so long that you, the euphoria in that moment is fantastic but then where do you go from there? How can you galvanize a group? How can you push them to that same level of drive and desire and just burning ruthless aggression to get there again? And the truth is you can't. Like it's different. It's a different type of motivation. Targets on the back didn't work and we've seen all the white noise surrounding this team this offseason. We've seen Orlando Scandrick. We've seen anonymous sources. And what happened last night was a different breed of Eagles. It wasn't the veterans that were going out there and struggling. It wasn't the old old guard that were going out there and trying to keep that dream alive. These were players that have been buried on that roster. It's Sidney Jones who was told that the Sidney Jones experiment is over. That he doesn't have a place in this team. That he will be traded after the end of this season. He goes out there for one play and makes arguably the biggest defensive play of the game and gives that offense a chance. It's Boston Scott who had 59 rushing yards 69 receiving yards. who went out there as someone that was signed back in December of last year that had a fantastic spring program and was pushed down the roster because the Eagles brought back Darren Sproles. He was pushed onto the practice squad because of the arrival of one last rodeo for Darren Sproles. It was Josh Perkins who despite the Eagles intent on running 12 and 13 personnel, they refused to keep a third tight end on the roster and when they did go out and get another one, it was Alex Ellis. These are three players who have been battered and bruised and pushed and buried down that depth chart and wanted to prove a point and you could see it in Boston Scott's runs in the moments where he where he'd get up off the ground when they're 17 to 10 down and he'd be fired up and it would electrify everyone in the stands. That was a performance that the underdogs rose up and the Eagles needed that raw energy. They needed that belief because now it's not about Super Bowls. It's not about making the playoffs. It's not about culture. There's that unique drive. It's back again. For the first time, in my opinion, since the end of the Super Bowl, there is a unanimous bid, a unanimous drive and belief that they can get to the playoffs, that they can win out, that they can beat the Cowboys. And if you get playoffs and a prayer, we're halfway there. And you know what? For all the criticisms that we have of that first half, whether it's the offensive play calling, whether it is on defense, then hey, do you know what? Are we going to bring that Ronald Darby meme back one more time? Yeah. You all laughed at me. Well, I have to say, you're not laughing now, are you? For all of the criticism, I think it's easy to look back at the negativity and say, why are they running so much on second and longer? Why is this player still on the field? Why was that call cool happening? But to look at the fact this team found some resilience, they rose through adversity. They were almost, almost 
embarrassed two weeks in a row and they stopped that from happening and you know what yeah it was against the 2 and 10 Giants but again it could have been against anyone they needed that win it galvanized them and now playoffs and a prayer are a possibility and there is every reason to believe that they can go a little bit further but you know what won't let you down in the first half and just be good throughout your purchase of Philly Sports Network merchandise which you can get down in the description below we've got Christmas sweaters we've got long sleeve we've got t-shirts we've got jumpers we've got hoodies Everything you could want. If you want to be a cozy boy this winter but look good while doing it, rep the brand, be part of the community. PSN merch is the way to do it. But now, before we move off for the Eagles, okay, I briefly mentioned this earlier in the show. And do you know what? This is normally a show filled with jokes and humour and lightheartedness, but not today, all right? We're going a little bit more serious because I think it warrants it. And the magnitude of what the Eagles just did is going to be underplayed all week long because of who it was. And if you look at Carson Wentz, again, this is a quarterback who everyone has said isn't clutch, who can't win a game-winning drive, who can't get it done in the fourth quarter. And he's now gone straight in here and proved a damn point. He was without his wide receiver, one, two, three, starting running back and franchise right tackle. And he went out there in the third quarter and willed that offense through. He pushed them beyond their own barriers in a way that only a franchise QB can. It's rare to find that. And do you know what? I think it has been lacking. It's not an unfair criticism to say that Wentz hasn't put a game on his shoulders in quite some time. He hasn't single-handedly lifted an offense and pushed them back out of hell. But this was the first time in a while we've seen it and it has shut a lot of people up because with no help, with no no help around him whatsoever. The audibles at the line of scrimmage, the escapism, the surgical nature of those passes were everything anyone could ever wish for from a franchise quarterback. And this was an identity game for Carson Wentz where forget every bit of criticism, forget every naysayer, every doubter. That was a moment where you can say, that's my quarterback. The Eagles have Carson Wentz for five years and what a blessing that is. You cannot be disgruntled at that whatsoever. So, but don't worry. A lot of you here are negative Nellies. All right, I know that. I'm British. I'm one as well. And you come to this show to voice that frustration. But today, we're not going to have it, all right? Instead, we've got a brand new song. A lot of you want it. A lot of you have asked about the songs. And what about the future of Clayton Thorson or Last Christmas and Captain Craven? No more tears and despair. We want playoffs and a prayer. No more tears. Tears and despair, playoffs on a prayer, no more tears and despair, playoffs on a prayer, no more tears and despair, playoffs on a prayer. There you go, that's that's number one, isn't it? On to the Sixers, who are fourth in the Eastern Conference, though technically second because of their record, so that's good. And they're still undefeated at home, which is very good. Ben Simmons is shooting threes again, which is lovely. But the main noise this week has come from the Flyers. Obviously, Travis Konechny is out indefinitely with a concussion, which isn't good news whatsoever. Although they're 7-2 and two in the last 10, and third... Woo! In the Metro standing, so fair play to the Flyers. The Vigno regime is off to a flying start. And there's been a bit of a push about who can step up now in wake of Travis Konechny. I think Oscar Lindblom is one of those players who should be able to see a bit of a boost in his stats. He's already leading the team in goals with 11 this season. But I think that now that there is that desire to replace what Konechny brought to the table, he's going to be facilitated that much further into the team. James Van Ramsdijk has also been on a tear recently and was one of the nicest players I spoke to when covering the team down in Prague. I think he could have a much bigger impact as well. He's got two goals and three assists in his last six games combined. And I think, again, with that need for a playmaker, you're paying a lot of money for a player that is currently sitting on the fourth line. Push him up, and off we go. Now, the Phillies, I'm going to briefly summarise here. Zach Wheeler got a five-year deal. DD has apparently agreed a contract. Realmuto is the BCIB, which apparently is the best catcher in baseball. So, unlike Nelson Aguilar. Apparently, the Phillies also want Chris Bryant. Michael Franco and Cesar Hernandez were cut on Monday, so they need a bit of infield depth. But DD's here, which is great. Zach Wheeler should hopefully provide some depth behind Aaron Nola and as someone that has proved he can stay relatively healthy over the last two years and shred those injury concerns, I think that's a good move for the Phillies. But that is it for another episode of This Week in Philadelphia Sports, guys. If you are new around this channel again, it would be amazing if you could hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for all of your support this year. It has been a blessing to to bring you these videos we've got a couple of special things planned between now and the end of the year so make sure you stick around from myself liam jenkins you can follow me on twitter at liam jenkins psn see you soon